Well, welcome back folks. Today we're going to begin the conversation around painting the exhaust system for the SL125 project. We're well into spring now and the weather is becoming conducive to painting outside. Not every day of course we are getting up in the low to mid 70s Fahrenheit, that's low to mid 20s Celsius. On and get off get rain but I think I can get uh, the painting in here over the next day or two. But I want to start the conversation by talking about the paint itself. What you see in frame right now are, or is the paint that I have used for the last few projects for painting the flat black standard color exhaust systems. And this is great paint. I'm very uh, fond of it. I've had great service uh, from it. The concern that I've had or have is that it's, since it's a very high temperature, this is a matching primer in the paint, very high temperature, which in order to cure requires baking. Now there's two ways you can do that if you read the instructions. One is to bake it in an oven and my oven certainly is not big enough to hold the exhaust system uh, for this project. There are other means you could try to use to uh, cure or bake out the finish uh, using a hot air gun and experimenting with different techniques. The other way that's spoken to on the label is to use what they call uh, on-machine or on-vehicle baking, which is you, you cycle the machine, or the, in this case be a motorcycle. This is really designed for automotive use. It's really a, like a header paint. And when they say on-vehicle, what they mean is you run the vehicle. And I'll see if I can show that to you right here and get it in frame for you and not uh, have a reflection for you, but uh, on the vehicle, run at idle for 10 minutes, then cool for 20 minutes. Run at idle for 20 minutes, then cool for 20 minutes. And then run under normal conditions for 40, or rather 30 minutes, and let cool. Well, for restoration projects, I don't run my projects long enough to actually do that effectively. You'd have to really ride them and take them out and use them in normal conditions as it speaks to. And uh, that's not really going to work for me on this project. I'm not going to run the bike enough, I don't think, to cure it effectively. So even though this is my preferred paint, I'm going to try something different as I mentioned this time. And I'm going to use this paint. Now I got this paint, the exhaust black high heat single stage from Marbles Motors who is a supplier of components and parts, aftermarket and reproduction parts uh, for smaller Hondas. Typically he deals in single cylinder vintage Honda Enduros, the SL and XL series. Good guy to do business with. I bought a lot of parts from him, especially when I did the SL70 project. And he offers this paint, which he claims the uh, paint is a dead ringer match for the black used on not only Hondas, but all of the uh, bikes back in the day, the Enduros from all the manufacturers, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Yamaha, as well as Honda. And the advantage to this, allegedly, is it does not require baking. Now, I don't think this is going to be as durable as this paint is going to be, or would be, frankly. But I thought I would give this one a try because it doesn't require baking. Uh, it is a little expensive. I think I paid around 1920 US dollars for this this can of paint, which is, I think, pricey. It's about twice what the VHT paint is. And he uh, recommends, uh, if you read his website, using a gray primer underneath the paint. So I picked up this VHT high temperature primer which does not require baking. So I think these two will be a good match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray out samples of each one of these paints to see how the colors match up. I'm most curious to see how the VHT paint, which I've traditionally used, matches up with this paint, which again, Marbles Motors claims is a dead ringer and custom matched to the original exhaust system colors. My guess is this paint, that is the Marvel's Motors paint, is going to be a little bit glossier than this. That's just a guess on my part. I have not sprayed them out yet. But that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. 
So in order to facilitate that, I made myself a couple little coupons here. These are just little pieces of sheet metal that I had in my scrap bin. I just cut them to size. And what I'm going to do is I'll clean these thoroughly and then I'm going to use these primers and these paints following the directions literally as they're talked about on the cans. And I'm going to make a sample of each one of these. Let it dry out for probably 24 hours. And then I'll bring you back and we'll compare the color. And that's really what this part of it's about. I've already made up my mind I'm going to use th this combination here. But I am most curious of how the gloss and the color matches between these two. So today I'm going to paint these samples out and uh, since it's supposed to be fairly warm and uh, I'll let them dry 24 hours and we'll come back uh, tomorrow or thereabouts and we'll see what they Well, look. it's been 24 hours. It's the next morning and these samples have had a chance to dry enough that certainly they can be handled as you can see here. Again, on the right is the Marbles Motors exhaust black high heat single stage and on the left is the VHT very high temperature flame proof which is really designed for headers and in fact when you talk about very high temperatures we're talking about <clears throat> excuse me 1300 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit which is 704 to 1093 Celsius which is of course very very high temperatures I don't think the exhaust systems on these bikes get that hot uh, and again this one on the left requires uh, baking either on the vehicle or off in an oven to fully cure, the one on the right does not. Uh, as I had suspected in the previous um, segment of this video, the Marbles Motors, the one on the right, is a little glossier. I don't know how well you can see that there. It came out a little glossier. It actually laid out, this paint laid out really nice and smooth. I was quite impressed with how smoothly it laid out. I uh, painted them at the same time, I used the instructions on the cans verbatim, and uh, the one on the left, which is the high, uh, extremely high heat, is a little coarser finish, it's a little duller, in fact it's more black. I, I think, I think the um, one on the right is a little more, just a touch more gray in it. And it's uh, a little gloss, just a touch glossier. And that's, again, as I indicated, as I had suspected. So that's what they look like sprayed out. I'm going to go ahead and use the Marbles Motors uh, single stage, no bake paint on this Honda exhaust just because of the challenges with baking it. And of course, I know I could use a heat gun and rig up a method to do it that way. There's other ways I could pursue that, but I thought I'd go ahead and use this paint since this bike is not going to be used as a rider. By the way, if you're using these paints on a rider, uh, something you're going to be using riding uh, on a fairly regular basis, you can certainly go with this uh, very high heat paint that requires baking because you'd be riding the bike enough, I think, to probably get the exhaust system hot enough to do the curing for you. I will uh, nowhere near be using the Honda enough. In fact, Honda 125 will not be ridden per se. It's a show bike, um, part of my collection, so it won't be ridden enough to get the exhaust. The heat cooling cycles, uh, the several heating cooling cycles you have to repeat um, to cure out the exhaust. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and use this, uh, this finish. Let's go over to the uh, exhaust system itself. I'll give you a little bit of a brief update on where I'm at right now before I go ahead and complete this and get a this. A way of reminder, here's uh, the exhaust system. It's 95% complete, just about ready for paint. The uh, filler here, this is the high temperature JB Weld that we talked about before that I had to use as a filler worked okay. It's really not designed as a body filler, obviously. And it required multiple uh, fillings, uh, skimming and sanding, skimming and sanding, because I ended up with some fine pinholes and uh, similar conditions here. But I did finally get it the way I wanted it. Uh, this is a complex shape. It's a compound curve. It actually drops off in two different directions at the same time. 
So in order to emulate and get that shape back, took some care and finesse with the sandpaper and the sanding block, but I think we're about where we need to be. The rest of the exhaust is uh, pretty much ready to go outside of uh, just a scuff coat or scuff sanding rather with probably 400 grit paper then I will certainly clean it really well with uh, acetone and or brake cleaner before I paint it uh, here coming up. In order to paint it, I'm going to have to figure out a way to suspend it. I think what I'm going to do in these six millimeter nuts that are welded on here for the boot guard, probably just put two uh, bolts in here, use a piece of wire, probably copper wire, and suspend it and uh, so that I can get all the way around and paint it effectively. And if I re remember to do it, I'll try to get a couple of shots of that, probably some stills uh, when I uh, am in the process of painting it. I'm not going to video that entire process. It's pretty academic. Uh, next time you see this exhaust system, it will probably be mounted on the bike. And, uh, and we'll do that as one of the later reviews of the project that are closing in and finishing it up. Uh, I think we're going to call this video a wrap right now, folks. Uh, this is probably a little shorter than what most of my videos are, but uh, that's really what we have for today. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.